Welcome back, microscopists. So I got a comment on another video about eccentric height, and I thought it would be a good idea to cover the concept of eccentric height in its own video, so that's what I'm doing here. So we're going to specifically cover what is eccentric height, why it's important, and of course how to set it on your TEM, and we're going to demonstrate that, of course, using an FEI Techni, but the process is very similar for any type or any brand of transmission electron microscope that you may be working on. So I want to start by showing you this diagram that I found in the basic Google image search, and I made some modifications to it just to clean it up a little bit. But Eucentric height is, quite simply, the position along the optic axis of your microscope that intersects with the eucentric tilt axis of your stage. If you're working with a Techni or an FEI instrument, the eucentric tilt axis will be the alpha axis. If you're working with a Joel, it will be the X axis. Now, those of you who are familiar with double tilt holders will recognize that you also have a secondary tilt axis if you're using a double tilt holder, which is the beta tilt. But what you have to realize is that this tilt axis is not a eccentric tilt axis. So in other words, the eccentric tilt axis is an actual property of the stage of the microscope and is not related to the holder that you happen to be using. So if we look at this diagram now, we see on the left here that the area on the specimen that is being illuminated by the beam along the optic axis is intersecting with the eucentric tilt axis. So that specimen is therefore at eucentric height. But on the right, we see that the point at which the specimen is intersecting the optic axis is no longer intersecting the eucentric tilt axis, so that would be, in this case, above the eucentric height. So now that we've discussed what eucentric height is, why is it important to be able to set it properly? Well, it's important because the performance of your microscope, and specifically the objective lens of your microscope, is always optimized assuming that your specimen is at eucentric height. So if we're deviated from eucentric height, that obviously will require the objective lens to be deviated from its optimal value, which will obviously impact the performance of the microscope, and it will also change any calibrations that you may have for magnification of your images or camera length for your diffraction patterns. So now that we've discussed what eucentric height is and why it's important, we can move on to how to set it on your microscope. So I have a fib lamella here I'm going to use to demonstrate this. I'm going to navigate to the stage tab and expand the flap out arrow. Then if I go down to alpha wobbler, I can turn on the wobbler and that wobbles the alpha tilt of the stage. So if the sample is not at eucentric height, you're going to see the image of the sample shifting as the alpha tilt is wobbled. One thing you can do, of course, is you can change the sensitivity of the alpha wobbler. So if I turn it off, just by selecting wobbler, I can change it from 15 to 10 degrees, and that is plus or minus if I don't want quite as severe of a wobble. And usually 10 degrees works pretty well. You can see the sample is staying in the field of view, but once again, the image of the sample is moving, so the sample is not at eucentric height. So what you do now is you go to your right-hand panel and you use your Z-axis buttons and you adjust Z until the image of the specimen doesn't move while the alpha tilt is being wobbled. So as you adjust Z, if the shifting gets larger, you know you're going farther away from eucentric height, and if it gets smaller, you're getting closer. And so we can see here as I'm adjusting the z-axis, the shifting is getting smaller and smaller until eventually it's minimized. It's usually helpful to do this at a fairly low magnification because at a high enough magnification, you'll basically never see complete elimination of the shifting. 
I think right now when I did this, I was at an indicated mag of 13,500X. Once the shifting has been minimized, just come back and turn off the wobbler and you're done. So that is truly the most rigorous way of setting eucentric height on your TEM. Now the way that most people set eucentric height on the TEM, and what probably is maybe a little more convenient, is the eucentric focus method. So with this method, I set my objective lens to its optimal setting, and then I simply adjust the z-axis buttons on my right-hand panel until I have my image in focus. And this is what I demonstrated on my basic operation video. Now one thing you have to keep in mind about this method of setting eucentric height is that it's only accurate assuming that the eucentric focus setting has been properly set. So you select the eucentric focus button on your right hand panel. The objective lens is then set to its proper setting. And then you use the z-axis buttons on your right hand panel to minimize the contrast in the image. And if there's any shifting of the image, you can just use the joystick to recenter the image on the screen. And again, you can see here, if I go too far past eucentric height, I start to get contrast back, meaning, of course, I'm no longer at eucentric height. So again, you're trying to minimize the image contrast. One thing that I do want to stress is that this method of setting eucentric height is only valid assuming that the lens setting for eucentric focus has been properly configured by whoever is managing the microscope. But one way that we can verify that the eucentric focus is actually correct is by simply turning on the alpha wobble again and seeing if the image doesn't shift while the alpha tilt is wobbled. So if we turn on the alpha tilt, we see here that the image is basically stationary, and this basically gives us the same result as doing the mechanical tilting method we did initially. Another important thing that needs to be stressed is that your height is only eucentric with respect to the alpha tilt axis. So in other words, if you're using the double tilt holder and you adjust the beta tilt, you are no longer going to be at eucentric height and you will therefore need to go back and reset it. And this, of course, is where having the ability to set eucentric height by simply adjusting the z-axis until the image contrast is minimized is helpful because then you don't have to wobble the alpha tilt and possibly alter a tilt condition that you may have set up with the specimen. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this video is the importance of acknowledging that eucentric height does not depend on the mode in which you are operating the microscope. And this was actually what inspired me to make this video was a person asking a question about eucentric height being different in STEM mode versus TEM mode. And I want to stress that this is a mechanical position associated with the stage and therefore it is independent of the mode in which you are operating the microscope. And we can actually demonstrate that here with a STEM image of the same lamella. So I've got the hat of STEM image here of the lamella and I'm just going to turn on the alpha wobbler and we're going to see if we get any shifting of the image while the alpha tilt is wobbled. And if we're at eucentric height then we really shouldn't see any. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're trying to demonstrate this in STEM mode is you need to use a fairly short dwell time in order to get a sufficiently fast response to see any shifting of the image when the alpha tilt is wobbled. And so to compensate for the short dwell time to give me more signal, I'm using a lower numerical value of spot size. So we have the sample that we set at eucentric height in TEM mode. And I can navigate back to the stage tab, expand the flap out, and then turn on the alpha wobble again with plus or minus 10 degree range. And we can see that I'm really not seeing any substantial shifting in the image while the tilt is wobbled. So now I can adjust the z-axis on my right-hand panel just to demonstrate that if I deviate from the height, I start to get more movement, and clearly that's what I get. And so again, 
This is just like in TEM mode. I can adjust the height using the Z-axis buttons until the shifting of the image is minimized. Again, if you go past the optimal value, you start to see more shifting again. But ultimately, I end up at basically the same Z-axis position I was at initially. And again, I can navigate back to the Stage tab, expand the flap out arrow, and turn off the Alpha Tilt Wobbler when I'm done. Generally speaking, people don't set eucentric height directly in STEM mode. They set it in TEM mode first, and then they switch into STEM mode and align the microscope in STEM mode. Another thing to keep in mind also is that the eucentric focus method cannot be done while in STEM mode either. You can only do that when you're in TEM mode. So that then begs the question, if you happen to be working with a double tilt holder and you're in STEM mode and you make an adjustment to the beta tilt, you're then no longer at eucentric height. So how do you set eucentric height again without having to go back into TEM mode? And so the way you would address that is you would start by optimizing your STEM image for the current stage position that you have now, which of course is at eucentric height because you set it while you were still in TEM mode. Get it focused, get it stigmated. Then if you adjust the beta tilt, what you're going to notice is the STEM image is going to go out of focus and you're also most likely going to see shifting of your image out of the field of view. So you would then use the Z-axis buttons on your right-hand panel to adjust the specimen height until the stem image was in focus before you made any adjustment to the beta tilt. And this is similar to the eucentric focus method of TEM mode, but the difference is that we don't have the ability to change the objective lens setting in STEM mode. So when you're focusing in STEM mode, what you're actually changing is the C2 lens and not the objective lens. And so with that, we're going to wrap up our discussion of eucentric height. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you have any suggestions for a future topic for a video, also please feel free to let me know because I've actually used suggestions for future videos on several occasions now. So Thank you again for your input, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.